Good afternoon. Welcome to Usability Testing. I hope your week is uh, a good week. And uh, and then today, this week is going to be a continuation from last week. So let me just share my screen with the class. Great. So last week we've looked at uh, it's a lot, it's a long lesson. There are a lot of slides, so you definitely have to uh, to do some reading on your own for uh, for some of the lessons uh, slide. The deck is available to you. But we have a checklist. There's a checklist that I have created as well to help you, and I also repeated the checklist in Collaborate. Uh, thank you for doing the Heuristic Lab. Uh, you've picked very, very good website. I really like the, the website that you've picked. Uh, complex they're complex they're a uh, transactional website so uh, where customer can do some very cool uh, thing on each of the sites you gave that you chose it um, you found some very very good relevant business impactful relevant uh, challenges you were uh, I had a good sense of who the users would be who you want to bring to uh, some of your sessions which will help you for your screener and, uh, and then I really found that you had a lot of uh, challenges that you found in the, with the website that you selected that will keep you busy, very busy for you usability testing. So you definitely have a lot of material. And then for each of the teams, I have put, provided comments, individual comments, uh, and I have put um, some tips on perhaps areas that you may want to focus on the usability testing, not to lead you, not to, uh, to push you into one direction. It's really going to be up to you where you want to go, but use it as feedback. And uh, and then also how you would go about uh, finding out maybe some of the issues and how you could validate some of the issues in the testing without bias being biased and without probing. And I think I've said, I mentioned, in the use barrel testing, we're going to do some practice. But next week, we're going to be doing use barrel testing. So those site with the class. So you're going to be picking people from other class, from the uh, from our classes. They will come, they'll be participants, and you'll play the moderator role, you'll play the observer role, and uh, people will actually use the sites that you've uh, that you've picked. They will do some of the goals that you found, and uh, and then we're going to do the session, and I will be listening to those sessions as well, and I will be participating in some of them. But you have good material, good good material to uh, to create the, the uh, what you need to create and prepare what you need to prepare for next week's session. So good choice. I was really happy. I'm hoping that you're happy with the feedback and I'm hoping that you're happy with your mark. I think you did uh, you did good. So if there are any questions, as it come to the assignment after reading the feedback and that I have provided, please reach out to me uh, here after class or we can do uh, we can book some time or we can talk about it tomorrow too or even today. That is also uh, an option. So this is the checklist. But before I go to the checklist, I just want to remind you of a few items for this week as well so that we don't lose sight of what is uh, expected. So we're in week four and uh, we're continuing doing the planning of usability testing. And, uh, and then we're uh, next week we're going to do conducting the sessions. So the deck is available and has multiple pages, a lot of pages, but it's really for, for you to help you, particularly when you're going to move on to how do we conduct a good session. Uh, but it has conducting sessions, it has information about your screener, your test scenario, your scrap, uh, observations, note taking. I have some example of questionnaire as well. If you were to choose to include a questionnaire at the end of the session, I haven't meant to talk much about this, but you could do a customer a, a questionnaire at the end, and there's some templates provided. Some of them are standard usability template that you could ask your participants. It's a good way to close and loop, close the, the, the sessions with the participant and get more insights, but it remains very subjective and, uh, and it's not observation based. And if you remember, the goal of usability testing is observation. We want to see people in action. We want to see where they're having challenges with Zara. We want to see where they're having challenges with uh, the mini in the box. We want to see if they're having challenges with the music. 
website, with any of the challenge, the, the website that you've set, we want to see them, we want to watch them in action, we want to hear them. We want to use Think Aloud so that we can hear what is happening. And what you will find, and perhaps you do want to have a quick, uh, a short one, a, a short questionnaire that you may want to include in your sessions, it's really up to you. You will see the disconnect between what they think, how they think that the session went and what you've observed. I've seen that all the time. People will give you a good rating for your site on the post questionnaire at the end because of multiple reasons. They think that that's what you want to hear. And uh, no matter how good you, how often you told them in the session, that it's not about them. It's not about us. We want to improve our site. In fact, we know that our site is broken, but we don't want to say that to him. But that's why we're doing your research. But they're still going to try to please you and give you some good answer. Or they may just not be aware at all that they actually were not able to complete their goal. That could also happen. So you're going to see a disconnect. And, uh, and the likelihood that some people will fail and to the point that they're not going to be able to go past uh, maybe the checkout or uh, and then you're going to say that this is failing is going to be higher than what they're going to rate you. So I'm not going to be spending time on questionnaire, post questionnaire, but there are a lot of examples that are provided. And then uh, dry runs. So today we're going to finish uh, the uh, working on the documents, on preparing the documents that you have. But tomorrow we have to, we're going to do some dry run. So you're going to need to uh, to do a complete dry run of running use about it, testing. So from from uh, practicing your uh, your introduction, using your, your script, and then doing practicing your moderation, practicing the user flow with your team. So with your own team, you're going to do a dry run. You're going to practice before next week, before we actually do the real thing, because I will be a participant, and I will be evaluating you on your how you are good as moderator, uh, particularly, uh, and uh, how good you are as a team. So next week will be the real thing with classmates, uh, so very important, you should do your dry run as a team so that you're comfortable of doing running a moderator. I would say the moderating piece is probably the most challenging piece and, uh, and also being a fair participant. So be nice to your colleague. Uh, but because we all know about this, uh, this uh, what it is that we're trying to do in Isabella testing, be collaborative when you are practicing with your own teams, when you're doing the dry run, when you're the participants. Uh, don't be too hard on them, but also be fair, though, of how you would do. And maybe your dry run, you want to do it on the site that nobody that you don't know. Maybe you want to do your dry run on different site that you pick so that it's new to the participants, so that you, as a facilitator, will be closer to the reality, uh, and uh, and then then if you're doing with your own site, that's really up to you too. And then next week we're going to run the session. So uh, now for this week, if I have put a lot of readings, I've added more readings. So the readings are optional, but the more you're going to read, the better you're going to be at it. Because there's a lot of questions or information that you probably have that you will find. I give more information about the screener, how you can actually screen, uh, create, create a screener. And, uh, and then I give you some templates. So, there are templates for the consent form, the test scenario, and moderator script. I did not give you a template for the screener, but you do have to provide a screener. But for the screener, and that is due for midnight tomorrow. So tomorrow midnight, and this is week two, so you had more than a week to be able to prepare the material. But you have to submit through using assignment and the, uh, the submit uh, functionality for that particular uh, deliverable on their assignment. The screener. For the screener, I just want to get a sense of who you're going to bring in, who are going to be your participants, and any particular criteria about your participants that are important. So if we think of music, the music player, we said we're going to have someone who's in market for music, who's not a customer of uh, of McCabe, and, uh, but who's actively in market. Maybe there's an age that we know or we don't know, or you can say we're going to follow the age of what we know that people are in the music industry, what they, who they are and what they are. Uh, maybe you want to say that you want uh, someone who's not, who doesn't have a guitar, never had a guitar, and, uh, and that would be your criteria. I don't need the exact scale that you're going to use, the exact questionnaire. That if you have, that's great, even better. 
what I need to definitely need in the screener at a minimum, I need those filter or criteria that will tell me if I were an agency that this is what I need to bring in, this is what I need to recruit. Okay. So uh, are we just filling out the templates where our own information is submit? Yes. If you can use, if you want to use those templates, use those templates. I actually created a template so that it's quicker for you. Where I'm very, very interested is your moderator screen. Well, I'm interested in all of them uh, because the screener will tell me if you've done a good job of knowing who you're going to bring as a participant. This, because we're going to do this real as well for our final assignment. This will be a real. You're going to do testing on people, external people, outside of your team, outside of your class. So you need to be clear who that's going to be. The consent form is you're going to see it's so straightforward. The test scenario, it's very important. The test scenario, I'm going to share with you my example of test scenario. And the moderate script, very, very important. Your test scenario is the engine, is really what you're, why you're doing this test. Which, which area are we, uh, are we going to be focusing on? I only need one submission by team. I only need one submission per team. And, uh, and then the moderator script, very important. So I give you the template, so it's a lot easier for you. You can just download the template and then fill it in with your own information uh, as well. And let's just look at the, and this is all due by tomorrow by midnight. So let's look at the test scenario. So I have uploaded a template for test scenario that will show you what you should have in your test scenario so that I know that you understood why and what you're going to be focusing on and what your test uh, the focus will be. So I just want to make, I want to share. Bear with me. Okay, so download a template and uh, and then I give you some uh, and then you will fill out a template. Obviously, you don't put the participant's name but you in your name yet. Right, you will do that on the day of testing. So next week, you're probably going to do this. You're going to put the name of the participant and then who's conducting the research. Uh, this template can also be used for notes, for note taking if you want. But here is the test scenario. So you're defining what are the test scenario? Where are we going to be focusing on? And most of you have already found this area on your site. In fact, you have more. You found more than you're going to be able to do in an hour. But uh, the test scenario, and these are samples that I give you. So really, you're not going to be able to bring to test everything that you found. So you need to make choices, OK? But you're going to pick the ones that you found in your heuristic evaluation that are probably the most problematic that you want to spend time on. But here, me, I give an example of, let's say that this is a heuristic evaluation that I did for Sunwing, and I want to book, I want to make, I want to be focusing on book a vacation because I found uh, that there were a there was a challenge with uh, the book experience, the booking and vacation experience at Sunway. So I will give the participant. Maybe I'm just going to say to them, book a vacation uh, with uh, Sunway, and then I would say all inclusive vacation for two from Toronto to to Cancun, March 17, all inclusive. Okay, so. I can be very detailed or I can leave it very large. It will depend on what it is that you're really trying to detect. So, but the more broad you are, the less you're going to be leading the participants. But definitely, I want to book a vacation. So maybe it's going to be book a guitar, buy a guitar. Maybe it's going to be uh, buy a piece of clothes at Zara. Maybe it's going to be uh, sign up for good food as well. And that's where you leave it in. But maybe you found that there was something very inside. Book a uh, sign up or buy a piece of clothes at Zara that you also want to be more specific that you may want to tell them. But you don't want to leave them. This is where you have to make choices. But I've, I, can, I will guide you on this. 
but uh, it will be up to you on how details. But the less detail you are, the better it is because you're not leaving them. You don't want to tell them, well, buy a vacation and click here, do this, and uh, this is too leading them. So you will want to know exactly which area of the site you want to visit for that scenario and which screen are you most interested in and up to which point. So obviously, if I book a vacation, I want to go through the entire experience. I want to go through my checkout. I want to go through my cart. I want to go through the payment page as far as that. So you will need to decide how far are you going to go. But you need to go as far as a, a user will need to to complete that goal logically right but maybe there are specific things that you already know that you want to be paying attention to when it comes to zara on the on the cart maybe uh, for the music so if i think of music we know that the filter lack of guidance for someone who's new these are things you know you want to be paying attention to but you don't tell the customer but you will see how they're doing it but this flow and spending time there will guide you will help you now Timestamp. So you're probably going to know at what point you started and when you finished. That will give you a sense of how long it took to complete, right? And then I put some comments. Choose scenarios that are based on your stack, that you notice some major issues that are business value, impactful, business impactful, drive business, bring your business or save costs, return exchange, return policy, find helps, uh, manage your... Uh, Track your order. So these are cost driver. So track your order for, let's say, mini in a box. Uh, if I can't find it, I end up having to call, then that's going to incur cost. So that's probably a scenario you want to include, right? So these, uh, what else about this template? Then you can take notes too. You'll be able to take notes as an observer, uh, as a moderator, and definitely as the observer. And then the observer can also say, and I said, for, no, for the note taker, for the person who's going to take, they can say pass or fail. And maybe they're going to say why someone has passed, why someone has failed. And then maybe they want to put a severity. Maybe they're going to say uh, severity, maybe there's something very, very bad that happened uh, in that experience that would be severe. We don't know, right? But maybe uh, you will know because you've done heuristic and you will know that Let's say for the music store and someone who's trying to buy a guitar, maybe not being able to actually find a guitar based on me as a newcomer who has a very specific budget. And when I come to guitar and I click on guitar and a specific guitar and I'm stuck and I can't go further there, then that's a part, that's a fail. And that is probably very high because I can't go further. But you may, the note taker may want to put more notes there. And you can also put notes, you as the moderator in the observation. So that is an example of a goal. The second goal then is upgrade your vacation. Maybe I found that upgrade your vacation experience is broken. And uh, and then maybe cancel your vacation, maybe add seat selection. So in your stick, most of you have done a very, very good job at knowing those goals. And you would probably just stick to those goals. But you just need to be clear. If there are specific screen or specific paths that you know that you need to cover, and we've, we've talked about it last week. Even if they fail, the music scenario where they fell, from the beginning of the goal, they fell. It's too early to stop the session. You would probably can continue. So if I were the you as a moderator, you would say, okay, great. I understand that, but let's pick one guitar now and let's continue from that. Then at least you know you're taking them to where you go as far as you can and you're not leading them, but at some point you probably have to help them to pass the next obstacle. But then you make note, this is failing, this is failing and why it's fell. But I think by now, you should already have a very good clear all of what your goals are and where you're going to be focusing in areas uh, and that, and then you put that into your template. I'm hoping the template is helping. The, uh, the consent is very, very easy. The consent template is super easy. And the moderator, so let's maybe look at the moderator template. Okay, I'm going to share the moderator template. So the moderator template is the template for you who's going to be moderating the session. 
It's a very, very big template, important template, because you're going to be new. You're going to be so nervous. But you can have your checklist, too. So you can print this checklist if you wanted. But at this point, you've already done all of this. So when you're moderating, uh, you just this is what your script, it's your actual script. It's the sequence in which you should do your, uh, your session, your moderation. So the template is very, very straightforward. And in, the, in blue is usually instruction for you, you, you in this class, in preparing, OK? So, uh, but then it really starts. So this is the beginning of the session. Welcome participant warmly and show her or him a place in, in which you are going to conduct the test. For the interaction, see her in a way that will let you see her or his face. Uh, the computer should show an actual website, maybe a neutral website. Maybe you don't want to show them the website because they are going to be thinking about it. And I did say, do not show the website yet. Then you start, hello, the name of the participant. Thank you for coming. So you don't need to put a name of a participant here. It's just something you're going to say verbally. And the screener will have given you the name. But this is really where you start. My name is Eve. I'm the researcher. I'm going to walk you through the session today. Before we'll start, I have some information for you. We are currently testing. Then you will say, we're testing Sunwing. We're testing Zara's website to learn as much as we can. Blah, blah, blah. The session will take about an hour. OK? And then, then these are really what you will tell. These are the instructions. You could actually not read word by word, but have a good sense. You can look down and look down your notes, but you kind of want to look at them too. But this is why you need to practice. If you need to make sticky notes to yourself on this and you print, and I would say, in fact, you're going to print this as the moderator. Then you're going to say, we're going to be here for about an hour. And, uh, and then do you have any questions? And remember, I'm not, I may not be able to answer anything during the test because then I would be giving you the answers. And this is why we're doing this. We're doing this so that we understand where there are some challenges or not. Then you say we're going to record the session. Then you show them their consent form, which is one of the templates. So the moderator test is to do this. It's for you as a moderator that was new to know to not forget about anything. Then you tell them that someone's you're going to be taking notes, maybe there's someone in behind the wall, the glass. Then your goal is to make them to uh, to be comfortable. Then I told you insert the screener info here. At this point, all I need maybe for your screener, you can insert insert your screener here if you want. Is show me who give me a sense of your participants and the specific criteria about those people that you're going to be bringing in. So reuse what you've done for your stick but you may need to be a little bit more specific or not. But I need to understand that if I were the recruiting agency, that I need to bring people that match those specific filters. Think of them as filter. OK, then uh, then then you you you'll have. Have you used any similar product? How much time da, da, da. that will be up to you? It will be depending on what you are uh, what you want to repeat to them that maybe we've asked them in the screener. So let's say if it's the music, then you will say, I understand that you are looking for a guitar. I understand that uh, you are looking for a guitar. You don't own a guitar. And uh, and then you've heard of McCabe or you've never heard of McCabe. Maybe you're going to say, I want people that never heard of McCabe. Right? Then you're going to say, uh, and I know you never bought a guitar, but you think you're buying a guitar online. So today we're going to be spending time on a website. The company is called Macab, and uh, we're actually going to be looking, doing some tasks. I'm going to give you some very specific scenarios to do, uh, and then uh, and then I really want you to be comfortable, and that may be it for you for your opening. But you could use your screener to uh, to include a few questions that you had put into your screener, just to make sure that they're the the right people, but for sure you will know at that point. It's really just to make them comfortable. But again, you're going to need to time yourself. We have an hour to do all of this, right? But the moderator script will help you to do this. Then, then you'll see how you feel. If you feel ready, let's begin the task. Then, uh, then I give you some tricks and things that you need to do. Then you're going to be recording the sessions. And then you're going to say, we have maybe five scenarios that I would like you to go through today. And I'm going to read you the first scenario. If you have any question, let me know. B 
before we turn over the website, can you share with me reasons why you would like to visit a site like a music website? Then you will list your reasons. This is going to be inside. Then at this point, you cannot go to the website, and then you take them to the homepage of the website. Then you remind them during the whole, please test. So this is the moderator script. So I give you a template. You have to complete that too. Uh, and this is what you're going to use for your practice. And this is what you're going to use when you actually moderate the sessions next week as well. Okay? Why we do the dry run? The dry run will be you with your team should do a dry run. So on Wednesday, you feel prepared to do the, uh, the, the class, the real sessions in the class with me and, uh, and then your teams is that you will find things, you'll adjust your moderate script, you're probably going to need to want to adjust it or for yourself, it'll be more comfortable. It will make you better, feel better about it. And what you want is you don't want to come across as being too mechanic either. But I understand we're in class, but you don't want to sound like you're a robot as well. You want to sound very, very natural, right? So it's like anything else. The more you practice, the better you will be. So that is what you need to deliver. You need to deliver... Uh, or produce for your assignment the uh, those uh, those four pieces which you can include the screener in the uh, in the moderator script, but you need to provide information about the screener or the participants, the consent form, uh, the test scenario, and moderator all in one submission for your entire team, and you have to do that before uh, midnight between now and tomorrow midnight. And then what I will do today is I will give you more time to be able to practice. Uh, to continue to work on your um, on your pieces. Okay, so any questions? I don't know, Liliana. Are those tears? Why do we have tears? Oh, okay. So how can I help? This is the time to uh, to discuss this. How do we go from tears to smile? All right, next week we're gonna do real, next week is gonna be real testing. I'm gonna be, uh, you're gonna be in your teams in the black, in the breakout sessions and you're actually gonna be doing, you're gonna run usability testing with people that are outside of your team. So it's gonna be in our class, we're going to be switching. People will be switching over, around. They'll be coming to your room, and you'll be a participant. And then the, you all going to role, play the role of moderator, note taker, observer, note taker, participant, moderator. So no, tomorrow, this is going to be next week. But what we're going to do now, today, I'm going to give you time today to finish on the material. So you have to finish those templates. You have to fill them out or uh, finish, bring the template. I say the biggest template right now or pieces that you have to fill in that is unique to you is the task, the test scenarios. The test scenarios are what is unique to you. The consent form is super easy and the moderator script is also already all done. Really? It's the test scenario. When you think of it, I show you four, but the screener, the criteria, the real filter. But the test scenario and knowing who you're going to bring in in your moderator's script is the biggest piece. But the, the samples are already all filled out. The test scenario and the screener element. The screener element in your moderator and the test scenario is really the most critical. So uh, it's, it's no, there's no specific amount of criteria, Anya. It's really what is what do you think will make a difference on the participants? You want participants that are representative, right? If you feel that, uh, obviously for a music scenario, they, they, we want someone who's in market who doesn't have a guitar, but do we care about age? Maybe we don't, but we really want someone who's actively looking, who's thinking of guitar, who's newbie, never a guitar. Like these are, and this is it as well. So remind me, Anya, of the website. Which website do you have, Anya? Oh, yeah, Structure. Actually, I think they have a very good website. Uh, I think it does a good job for the user, and I don't think I give a lot of negative or critiques about the site. It seems very straightforward in terms of the heuristic and uh, and then complaining the user goal, but 
of course, I don't spend as much time as you guys all do. But uh, so for structure, you probably want, uh, you want people to have maybe bought furniture, or maybe people that have never bought furniture. Uh, maybe you want women, maybe you're more interested in men or women. Maybe you want, uh, I don't think that, well, let me ask you, do you think that there needs to be, there's something so specific about the participants Beside the fact that the either structure or non structure customer, maybe they've bought something on furniture, maybe they are actively looking for buying furniture, maybe they're looking for a piece of furniture. I think I would probably at least have that at the minimum. Why bring someone who doesn't care about buying furniture as well? So, uh, and uh, and then maybe you want to bring someone who's a, a structure customer. Maybe you want to test some some other scenario than buying as well. Maybe a return policy, or I don't know. But this is probably where you need to uh, focus and ask you stop. You need to think about what will make the difference for that user goal or that scenario. What is relevant to that user goal or that user scenario? Maybe you're all going to bring only people that are actually actively looking for furniture. Maybe there's a particular type of furniture that structure is interested in, or you think that maybe you're interested in, but I doubt it. So to recap, the test scenario and the screener are the documents that we need to complete right. I'm missing anything. You need to complete all screener, consent form, test scenario, and moderator scrap. The, mo the screener information can be included in your test in your moderator scrap if you want, but you need to have four pieces. There are four, but your screening screener can be a document by itself if you want, or it can be in your moderator scrap on, on the page. I've said here you can repeat your screen or information when you open up the session with them. So four pieces, one of them can be individual or in your moderator scrap. So you need to use... Hi, I have a question. Yeah. So uh, for the budget uh, that we need to establish, can we create an estimate or does it have to be like factual and like something we need to research specific to the industry? No, fa it's factual. So um, yeah, so in terms of our research on that? No, go with what I've shared with you in the, in test in the in the class. Okay. You don't need to submit bud the budget information at this point for tomorrow. Hmm is really the four pieces, the screener, the consent form, the test scenario, and the moderator script. Okay, thank you. Yeah, but for budget, you you may, you may should think of what, you, if you were to do this, what would be the budget for, uh, for something like this? Then as I said, the budget can be as little. If you do it in at the office with customer and you only pay them an incentive and you only pay your agency to recruit the people, you can do very low budget. Uh, you could do testing between three, five, ten thousand dollar, fifteen thousand dollar, but I think you can do some testing with five thousand dollar if you keep it minimum. So these are the numbers I would work with. But for tomorrow, I really want the four pieces: the screening, the consent form, the test scenario, and the moderator scrap. But keep the budget info, keep it out in your pocket because you probably, I think, you may need to include that into your final report. Uh, okay, so you only need, you're going to need, okay, so there's a few questions. So let me just go through each question. So there's no amount of criteria. You just need to make sure that you need to bring people that are relevant to what to your, what you're trying to test. So I gave some good, some example, but just to, and uh, use your baseline of your user, user, your user type and your user goals, your user type for your heuristic. You already have something to work with, but just think about, is there something really more specific that I need to think about for the participants to come in? Uh, yes or no. So, uh, but I'll be able to give you insight where you may have uh, uncertainty. The goal of this assignment is maybe for me to give you feedback too, okay? So uh, there's no set of criteria, but if, if you only give me just, you say structure, well, that's not enough, right? Structure, existing customer, like I need to feel that you know who you're gonna be bringing in. You just didn't say, we're just gonna bring structure customer. That's not, that would not be enough. Like are they in market, are they not in market? Have they bought, have they never bought furniture? Maybe you care for someone who's bought furniture online before. 
because maybe you want to hear about some people that have learned furniture. They get, you're going to see, you're going to see them also. Are they better? Do they do better when it comes to buying furniture online because they've already bought furniture? So you may want to bring people that are never bought structure and uh, are actually looking for furniture, never bought furniture online. Then you may say, I'm going to bring five people that have that are either structured or non-structured, but I have bought furniture online before that are actively also looking for, uh, for furniture. And give me a sense of split, five of five, five. So you should have probably 10 customer. Uh, but again, it all depends on your budget. Maybe you're just gonna bring five customer are in market for furniture, five customer in market for furniture, never bought furniture before, and, uh, have bought structure, but at uh, in the store, you have to make decision. You just have to explain why. Why are you picking these choices? So to recap, the test scenario and the scenario the documents are So I think I've answered this. Uh, and uh, and then should we list our two different user types? So you have to list the in terms of participants. We need to know who are going to be who are the participants that will come to your study. So you have new, we've said in your heuristic, you've said new and existing customer, right? So you're at least going to have some new customer, people that have never bought music uh, or a guitar are happily looking in market. So that is one type. And you're going to have uh, people that have bought music, they have a guitar, and they're only really looking at doing rentals as well. And they may be customer of Macab or they're not customer of Macab. Uh, but they do rental once a, at least once or twice a year for business. And that's all, right? So it's who you're going to be bringing that you think will make a difference in what you will find in your study. Okay, for this assignment, so this you will think about, don't think about who's the participants tomorrow or next week. Think about if when we are going to do this off real life, who are going to be the participants next week, tomorrow and next week, we're going to be our, we are going to be the participants, but there's a final step in the final big final project where you're going to be bringing, we're going to do it with people that are outside of a school. So think about if you were to hire an agency, then this is the thinking you have to do now is you're hiring an agency to bring real participants to do this which will be the final, one of the final assignments. So we went from doing a heuristic evaluation to practicing in class with this assignment, we're gonna be practicing in class. Then we're gonna move on, we're gonna bring, we're gonna do the real testing with people that are outside of a program. So we're practicing or practicing or practicing, okay? So all the, I think all the assignments are available. You can read so you get a bit of the story too. Will tomorrow, like tomorrow they will submit it as one PDF. You can, uh, I think it's better if you do separate PDF. It's going to be a big one. If you put all in, it's okay. But you gonna it's uh, you're gonna need to print for your own uh, when you're gonna be in the session. You're gonna be printing maybe just the pages that you need. One is okay. I, it doesn't really matter to me as long as it's all there. We were just asking because we thought it might be difficult for you to sift through four different things for each uh, group. Yeah, you're so kind, uh, Mariam. So yes, you can do one PDF. It's probably easier, in fact, yes. But I'm not going to penalize someone who sent me four, three or four. It's okay, too. But thank you. Okay, so uh, again, there's a lot of materials that you have to read on your own uh, as well. But right now, focus on the consent, the screener, the test scenario, or the test scenario, your moderator script. And your uh, the screener, your criteria for your customer, you've already done a lot of that thinking for your heuristic. Think about if we were to bring real people from outside, okay? Uh, because you will have, this is what we will do uh, very soon. But next week and tomorrow for practice and next week, we're doing with the class. So we're practicing among the stuff. So everybody is practicing, everybody is learning. No one should be nervous. No one should be... Uh, Everybody should feel safe. We are all at the same level. Everybody is the same level when it comes to use of our testing with maybe a few exceptions. Some of you may have or not done. But uh, what I will do now is I will open up 
uh, I can open up the breakouts and you guys can regroup in your breakouts and then discuss uh, a little bit so that you're all very clear on what needs to be done. You can uh, continue to work on some of those and I will come and visit. But the class will finish at uh, 125, I believe. And uh, and then you can uh, and then you can do a little bit of work in your in the breakout between now and then. But at some point, I will have to close uh, collaborate because I'm teach I have another class that I'm teaching. Actually, I'm my next class is at 1:30, so I could leave collaborate if you guys want to continue in the uh, at 2:30. You guys can continue and collaborate if you want in a breakout. Are there any questions? Tomorrow we're gonna practice or we're going to start thinking about conducting the sessions. But by tomorrow, you should be very, very close to have finished your uh, your documents. But what I can do tomorrow is I can give you more time. But I would really like for us to practice before we go to practice next week with class, because next week I will be paying attention to how you are actually moderating. And I'll be giving feedback as well, too. OK. So I know it's a lot, it sounds a lot, and maybe for some of you, you're a bit nervous, but focus on the material and uh, and then you'll you'll see that it's gonna be a lot easier when we do the practice with a good script in front of you in the test scenario and knowing, being clear on what you're testing as well. So let's see how the breakouts work and uh, number of groups, how many groups do I want? There's 15 and I think, I can randomly assign, but I think you guys are able, a lot of attendees to switch. So you're able to, I can, I'll do random assignment, but you'll be able to go and switch rooms and meet with uh, your team members. And uh, I'll put four, number of groups, four, oh, number of groups, three, four. I'll put five groups, but you guys can end up switching. Are there any questions? Are we clear? Awesome, perfect. So I'm gonna open up breakouts and you guys can stay as long as you want, but then at 1, 225, I'm gonna to need to close and then go to my next class, but you guys can stay in a breakout in practice if you, or uh, work on your consent, your document, or if you're done, then you can start even thinking about how you would go about moderating. Good, so we'll see you tomorrow as well. But I will come and see if I can switch. I can, uh, I can visit uh, for the next five, 10 minutes. Thank you.